this subject. Our topic for this week is all about ICT as a platform for change. ICT is a tool, a medium, and the force in bringing out about the action and mobili mobilizing change in, in a population, society, or culture. It is the fastest way to spread, share, and access information anywhere in the world. ICT as a medium for advocacy and developmental communication. Advocacy is a process of supporting and enabling people to express, defend, and promote their rights, concerns, and view. Information Communication Technology, or the ICT, helps in the spread of awareness of important issues that surround our environment, our country, and people. Advocacy in democracy is about getting what you want out of the government. In a democracy, which is a collection of voices, it is everyone's job to use their voice to remind the government about what people want. And that is according to Matthew Kaplan. ICT is a helpful tool in a human development and country. ICT covers any communication device or application, including radio, television, cellular phones, computer and network hardware and software, satellite system, as well as the various services and applications. ICT can help in accessing learning resources for students, announcement of important information for people, and communicating government services to the people. The role of ICT in the recent history or in the history of the Philippines. So throughout recent history, the Philippines has been one of the few nations that demonstrates unity for, all, for a call to action or social change. These campaigns for social change would have not been successful if it was not for ICT. So the first one is EDSA or People Power Revolution. The People Power Revolution lasted from 1983 to 1986. During a radio broadcast of Radio Veritas, Cardinal Sin encouraged the Filipinos to help end the regime of then President Ferdinand Marcos. A major protest took place along EDSA from February 22 to 25, 1986, involving 2 million Filipinos from different sectors. This inclu uh, included civilians, political parties, and the militaries and religious groups. The radio broadcast helped change the course of history. Without it, Filipinos would have been moved into action. The next part of Philippine history is the EDSA DOS. This is also known as the 2001 EDSA Revolution happened during January 17 to 21, 2001. It was fueled after 11 prosecutors of then President Joseph Ejercito Estrada walked out of the impeachment trial. As a result, the crowd in the EDSA grew over the course of few days through text brigades. Like the first People Power Revolution, EDSA DOS would have not been successful without the tax brigades. The third is a Million People March. This is a series of protests that mainly took place in the Luneta Park from August 22 to 26, 2013. There were also several demonstrations that happened around key cities in the Philippines and some locations overseas. It was to condemn the misuse of Priority Development Assistance Funds or the PDAF through DAB as the Million People March. The number, of, the number of attendees was around 400,000. Despite that it was still considered as a success and clearly demonstrated how, peop, how powerful social media campaigns are, the organizers and promoters of the people, uh, Million People March used Facebook and Change.org as their medium. Last but, last but not the least is Yolanda People's Finder. Recent storms in the Philippine history gave birth to the People Finder database powered by Google. 
During Typhoon Yolanda, the People Finder was a vital tour for people around the globe to track the situation of their relatives. This proved to be successful and is now adapted by more organizations to help people track relatives during calamities. Next is we have the development of communication. It is an approach to communication which provides communities with information they can use in battering their lives. An art and science of human communication applied to speedy transformation of a country and the mass of its people from poverty to a dynamic state of economic growth that makes a possible greater social equality and a larger fulfillment of human potential. For this, we have the ICT 4D or the ICT for development. So with this, we have it is an initiative aimed at bridging the digital divide that is the display between technological have and have not geographic location or demographic groups and aiding economic development by ensuring equitable access to up-to-date communication technologies. So we have here the reclassifications of ICT4D. The ICT4D topology are the following. We have here the political, government, and empowerment. Next, we have economic and livelihood. Last, uh, next, the third one is social and education. Then lastly, we have infrastructure and access. Next, we have the social power of social media. So here, social media has the potential effect to social change. So every person must have the means and access to information and should be able to exercise the right to freedom of opinion in and expression, which includes the right to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any form of media. So we have here the types of rich and multimedia content. The first one, we have the animation, online games, online tests and courseware, and the podcast and vodcast next we have the social power of social media um the aim of social power of social media are the following so it social media can promote social change or advance reforms also it can support social justice or pro create social movements Access to those who are improversed, improv improv hurting, left out, or victim. Next, we have stop bullying or discrimination, help during calamities or tragedies, and lastly, allow people to have responsibility to engage as citizens. So, as Filipinos, we have here digital citizenship and the Filipino people. When we say digital citizens, those are the internet, uh, the internet regularly and effectively, as defined by K. Mossberg et and others. So again, digital citizens are those who use the internet regularly and effectively. So, digital citizens are generally skillful and knowledgeable about the use of internet through mobile phone, web-ready devices, and computers with the government, private, and public group. So, digital citizenship starts when you open an email account, join social media sites, buy or sell merchandise, or services online. However, digital citizenship goes beyond just simple internet activity. But likewise, accepting and participating framework as defined by T.H. Marshall's online citizen traditions. So we have here the three. The first one is liberalism. It is a political philosophical founded on the ideas of liberty and equality. Next, we have republicanism. It is the ideology of being citizen and the people are the sovereign, are the sovereign power. Last but not the least is the ascriptive hierarchy that no person or organization is in control over the internet. So, digital citizenship. So, internet access in the Philippines began in August 1986 when the first Philippine-based public access, BBS, or the Bulletin, 
bulletin board system went online operated by Dan Angeles and Ed Castaneda. Since then, it has grown with the innovation and changes. Today, according to AGB Nielsen Philippines and the data from www.internetlivestats.com, there are around 44,500 million internet users in the Philippines or 43.5% of the population. The percentage is higher than the ASEA, ASEA region which has the average of 38%. So this shows that more and more Filipinos have the internet access and majority of which have access to social media with significant percentage of consumers purchasing online. So paying taxes and getting a passport and many more government processes are now available in the internet. Digital citizens have the advantage of being able to avail themselves of the convenient services. However, there are non-digital citizens who may not be in a position to avail these internet services, leading to social isolation and economic stagnation. This gap between the digital citizens and non-digital citizens is called the digital divide. This poses a challenge to the government and the society for a computer access equality for everyone. Next, we have the elements of digital citizenship. Again, digital citizenship can be defined as the norms of appropriate, responsible behavior regarding to technology use. So, according to digitalcitizenship.net, the nine elements of digital citizens are the following. So, first, we have digital access or internet access. It is the basic element to becoming a digital citizen. This could be at home, in school, and internet cafes. Next is the digital commerce or e-commerce is an increasing and here to stay a selling and buying of goods online becomes the norm for shopping for ease and savings. Next, we have digital communication. Digital communication has changed the way we relate and communicate with one another. Before the internet, communicating to people from far away places was limited and slow. Today, it is easier, faster, and cheaper to get in touch with anyone around the world and beyond. The fourth one is digital literacy. It deals with the learning and then sharing of teaching about the technology available online. It, as a tool, the digital realm has a lot of possibility that will help in the learning process of students and their ability to access the needed information in their research and study. The fifth, fifth one is digital etiquette. It is the appropriate conduct on the internet and very challenging considering that people came from different backgrounds and cultures. Although there are established rules and policies, it is important that each digital citizen behave responsibly to improve the use of digital technology. The next one is digital law. Digital law deals with the laws and ethics in society. Various countries have formulated laws, laws that govern how digital citizens should act. The next one is digital rights and responsibility. It is the right to privacy and speech protection in the digital world. However, policing and implementing this right are still a challenge. Digital citizens must understand the responsibilities that come with their rights, to respect other rights, and how to use the technology in the proper way. The next one is digital health and wellness. The danger of using the computer and the internet have manifested and have been cause suffering to digital citizens. Physical stress due to digital use can cause eye irritations, bodily pain, carpal tunnel syndrome, hearing difficulty, and many physical manifestations caused by long and repetitive computer use. Last but not the least is digital security or self-protection. So the dangers of identity and information theft, hacking of computers for information, and many threats caused by the digital citizens are very real. Digital citizens must protect themselves by creating difficult passwords, installing virus protection, backup data, and many other protection protocols to protect their digital rights. Let's, let's move forward with change.org. Change.org is dubbed as the world's platform for change, where anyone from the online community can create a petition and ask others to sign it. During the past times, petitions were only done through signing a paper, usually done by group asking for signatures via travel. Change.org give access to more people by allowing the online community to affix their digital signatures on a, peti on a petition. So Change.org's mission is to help people from around the world to create the change they want to see. 
for years. Change.org hosted several petitions that helped solve the following problems. Economic, criminal injustice, abuse of human rights, lack of education, environmental concern, animal abuse, human health concerns, and the world hunger. So, there are three phases of social media. The three phases of social media. We have here the three, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good use for communication where distance no longer matter. The second phase of social media is the bad. It allows people to hide behind the screens and avatar and it has taken over our lives rather than us being in control. The last phase of social media is the ugly. It has become a common cause of a broken relationship, self-centeredness, and egocentricity. It is also for frauds and child abuse. So those were the three phases of social media. Next, for our activity, let us answer our learning activity worksheets or law for this week. So for our first activity, that is identification 10 points, direction, read each statement carefully and write your answers in your answer sheets. For the second activity, we have multiple choice again. So that is 10 points. Read each item carefully and choose the best answer. Next activity, we have word search. So directions, circle the 10 words listed below. Words, words appear straight across, backward straight across, up and down, down and up, and diagonal, 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 sorry. Last but not least, we have activity 4, that is essay. For each question, provide a short and concise answer with some relevant example for clarification if necessary. So that's our, uh, our, our lesson and activity for this week. Thank you again for listening. So if you have any more questions or clarifications, send me an email. Here is my contact number, my Facebook account, and my MS Teams account. Always remember to stay safe and happy learning to everyone. Thank you very much.